In this video, I'm going to create a monster sound with my voice. Monsters have often been the driving force to some of the most iconic sounds of all time. The pinnacle of them being the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. And before that, the infamous Godzilla roar. But how were these sounds made? Believe it or not, the dinosaurs all died before we got a chance to stick a mic in front of them, and nobody even bothered to write down how they sounded, so we just had to guess. Herein lies one of the reasons creature sounds are so difficult to make. Aside from Godzilla, whose roar was famously created by dragging a resin-coated glove along the strings of an upright bass, you can't exactly craft them out of household objects the way you can with nearly any other sound. A saucepan, try as you might, sounds nothing like a dinosaur. The T-Rex is primarily a combination of lion, elephant, and alligator. But recording different animals from scratch is a ton of work. You have to schedule time with someone who has access to an alligator or an elephant, drive there, sit in front of it for days on end, Bold. prodding it with a stick hoping it might make the sound you need without a car driving by at the same time, and get enough different takes to make more than one sound when you get home. I actually managed to record all of these animals to create my own T-Rex roar a few years ago. And this is what it sounded like after all was said and done. I'm happy with the result, but was it really worth all that? Sometimes yes, but not always. What the f there must be some other way we could record a monster sound without having to go outside. Good news! There is! And you won't even have to leave the comfort of your computer chair you converted into a toilet. It's you! Barring some sort of unfortunate farming accident, you possess one of the most dynamic instruments in the world. The human voice. Variety is key in any sort of organic sound. This comes with more good news. Not only do you get to control exactly what sounds you make, but your voice is the only one like it in the whole world. And within it lives your own brand of monster. My go-to is what I call reverse screaming. It's like regular screaming, but inhale. I like to start here and find as many different ways to blend it as I can. If there's a sound you can't quite get, just rope one of your friends into seeing what their monsters sound like. Using false promises of money, I was able to trick my roommates into making fools of themselves. One of them sounds like this. And the other sounds like this. Lastly, I added some personalized white noise. As well as letting the air out of this balloon which I'll explain shortly. Now that we have our screeches, we go through them to find the one we like best for our bass sound. And stick our effects on it. Pitch shifters, equalizers, and my personal favorite of our hired goons, the sweeping resonant low pass filter. Once the bass is established, we can add in other selections and flick bop, pull and twist it until the sun goes down. Now we can add the white noise. If my voice is hitting very specific frequency ranges across the spectrum, we can use the noise to fill in the gaps between the voice layers. We can also shape the sound a bit to be more aggressive if necessary. And the coupe de greasy, our balloon sound. Stick on a pitch shifter, and a dash of reverb. And there we go. A creature worthy of Lovecraft himself. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're looking to hang out with myself and other video game audio enthusiasts of all measures, then join our Discord server in the description below. It's an incredibly supportive community with over 600 members now. We at Blip Sounds are very proud of what it's become, and we'd love for you to join. I'm looking forward to seeing you there and in our next video.